What is going on with the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex real estate market? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you what is going on as of June of 2024. So stick around. Hey everyone, my name is Danae Hewitt and I am your go-to DFW realtor here in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. I help a lot of people buy and sell their homes, relocate here to the area. So if that is you, I would love to help you out, but let's get into the real reason why you are here and that's to learn about the market. All right, so I'm actually gonna take us back a little bit to June of 2022 and that is when here in DFW is when we really saw the market shift. Pre-June of 2022, we call that like, like the pandemic. And I know we can still say that maybe we were pandemic was still kind of going on then, you know, I, I don't definitely not getting into any of that. But when interest rates were so, so, so low in the twos and in, into the threes, homes were flying off the market like the second that they hit the market with a million showings and a million offers going for thousands of dollars over list price. And it was just kind of a, a frenzy and interest rates still stayed low. And then June of 22 is when they started creeping up. They started creeping up and it was so crazy to me because in May of 2022, I listed two homes, one at the beginning of May and one at the end of the May. The one at the beginning of May, crazy, frenzy, multiple offers, over list price, all that jazz. The home that listed at the very end of May, we didn't see a, a, as much activity. We, ha I didn't have an offer like the day that I listed it. I ended up getting multiple offers, but I didn't get that any multiple offers over list price. So it was like, whoa, wait a minute. That's, that's a difference. So I had started seeing it kind of at the end of May, but really let's just say June kind of line in the sand. That's when things started to slow down. They were at a fast pace. That was a frenzy. It was a very difficult market for buyers because they they had no time to make a decision on a house. It was like, okay, can we get in? Can we see it? Because if you were gone for the weekend, no, absolutely not. That home would have been sold. You lost your chance to go see it. So, and you didn't have a chance to come back and see it or bring your mom if she wanted to see it. I mean, no, it was a very fast paced market. So it started to slow down in June because interest rates were starting to go up and people like, they kind of like lost their window. So what's, so what's happened in the last two years? So I'm gonna tell you what, what's been happening. And I'm also gonna share with you if you're thinking about buying and selling right now, what y'all should be thinking about. I'm gonna compare a couple of stats for you. Again, my, I'm gonna be comparing June of 2022 to June of 2024. What's been happening in this last two years? Because we know now that over the last two years where interest rates have gone up to over 8%. They're not that right now. They are under 7% right now, but not like that much under 7%. Okay, so we're still, we are still up there and we've been in that uphill swing for about two years now. So let's look at our month supply. So month supply is if every single active home on the market were to sell, how long would it take for every single home to sell without any new homes hitting the market? So that's what we call month supply. And how we really gauge our market is if month supply is six months, of homes or more, then that is definitely a buyer's market. If the inventory is six months or less, then that is a seller's market. So truly we've been in a seller's market for years because we haven't had six months of inventory in a very, very, very long time here in DFW. And the stats that I'm looking at in my MLS is our entire MLS of DFW, all right? So which is so many counties, 50 something counties, I think, but, all right, so just for your for your reference, looking at single family homes in all of DFW in every single price range. So in June of 2022, the month supply was 2.2 months, which I'll be honest, I thought that was really high because there were still homes that were still selling very, very, very quickly. But you're always going to have those anomalies of homes, of properties that don't interest buyers, that 
maybe sellers were unwilling to do price reductions and the home sat for a very long time. So you are gonna have those anomalies that skew the numbers, but I was still surprised by seeing 2.2 months. But anyways, fast forward to June of 2024, our month supply is 4.4 months. So it is under the six months. So we are technically still in a seller's market, but buyers have a lot more leverage right now. And I will definitely get into that here towards the end of the video. Let's talk about home prices. So what's happening with home prices because everybody predicted that interest rates were going up, home prices were going down, market's gonna crash. You know, I mean like, yeah, all this stuff was predicted. Well, guess what? Market didn't crash. In all of our MLS, June of 22, the average sales price was $496,000 for homes. Fast forward two years, the average sales price is $489,000. So we've seen a $7,000 on average dip. Well, you know, that's not home prices are falling and the sky is crashing and, you know, and all of that. That's not what it is. So our market is real estate is cyclical. It's up and down. It's a roller coaster. Next month, it could be over by 10 grand. I mean, who knows? We don't know. But to only see it drop by a few thousand dollars not significant at all. So what that tells you is that the market here in DFW is still a very strong in market to invest your money in. Now for those homes that have hit the market, average days on market in June of 2022 was 19 days, which still that seemed like a really long time to me because homes were flying off the shelves or they were selling very quickly. But again, we have those anomalies. So anyways, 19 days. And now fast forward two years later, we're looking at 47 days on market market. That's a long time. That's a long time. Absolutely. That is a long time. Sellers might be getting a little antsy, like, why is it taking so long? Just because of maybe they're thinking about what happened a couple of years ago. But again, let me talk through that towards the end of the video, but let me get to a couple of more stats for you. Inventory. We all know supply and demand. If, and if there isn't a lot of supply, then the cost that demand is going to go up. Do we, do we remember during the pandemic when, when toilet paper was like $12 a roll because there was a limited supply of it? Yeah, so you know, this is real estate, so it's a little bit different, but that same thing, supply and demand. We did not have a lot of supply in June of 22. So the number of homes for sale was $25,000 in June of 2022. Fast forward to now, and we are looking at 36,000 homes for sale. We have a lot more inventory than we did two years ago. Two years ago, people were buying houses and they were refinancing in 2020 and 2021. So because of those low interest rates, so a lot of, we didn't see a lot of people put their houses on the market. And that's what also kind of caused that, that frenzy. But now two years later, things have changed. People are like, okay, you know, this is where interest rates are. I have to move and I have to give up my 3% interest rate because someone in my family has, has died or there is a divorce now in my family or a job relocation taking me out of state. You have to move. So we're seeing a lot more homes that are on the market that aren't selling as quickly. So we don't have that high demand for housing like we did a couple of years ago. All right, here's the last stat that I'm going to share with you. And this one I found very interesting. So I'm able to check in our system the number of showings that it takes until the home goes in pending status, which means it's under contract. So in June of 2022, it took an average of 14 days for homes to go under contract and be pending. And here in June of 2024, that is now 13 days. So it still takes the same number of people coming through the house, 14 and 13, before your house goes under contract on average. But let's go back to those days on market. Our days on market are 47 days right now. So it just takes a lot longer for those 13 buyers to walk through your house. It's taking on average 47 days, whereas before it took on average of 19 days to get all those people through your house. So it's a very interesting stat that I discovered. So now how am I prepping my home buyer clients and my home seller clients? Well, let's talk about my home sellers. The first thing I'm doing is, of course, we are running comps on the home to find out 
what homes are selling, how quickly they're selling. Because I like to tell my clients, hey, on average, it's gonna take anywhere from three to maybe six weeks for us to get an offer on this house. This house has been on the market for six weeks and it's still active and hasn't gone anywhere, so it might be a little bit longer. But I wanna share those stats so that my clients are not surprised when they go four or five days and don't have a showing. I don't want my clients to be surprised when I do an open house and no one walks through the door, all right? Because that is totally happening. I've got a couple of listings and doing open houses and there is no one walking through the door on some of them or one, one person does, okay? So you're not seeing a lot of activity because again, we've got longer days on market right now. So it's just a really good thing to do if you're working with another agent is to really understand and have them tell you average days on market, what does traffic look like so that you're mentally prepared when your home does hit the market and you're like, okay, why isn't my phone ringing? Why aren't there any showings? You know, it's going to take time. So that's definitely something that I tell my sellers. I also tell them that your home has to look pristine, tip top, beautiful shape. I even said that to them during the pandemic because we knew we were going to get multiple offers, but why not get as many as we possibly can? So have your house look mwah, beautiful, gorgeous, so that we can get more offers because someone might decide no because of your terrible carpet. Yeah, who knows? But so I've always been saying that, but now it is very important. You have to pay very close attention to those little, little things. If your faucet's loose, if, if that carpet does need to be cleaned, deep clean your house, clean your windows. These things are going to help your house stick out because you want to give the buyers of walking through your house the best first impression and you want them to put an offer in. So put your best foot forward is 100% what you absolutely have to do in this market. And if it comes to staging, that's going to be super specific on your house. I mean, I've got a listing right now. My, my gosh, it's gorgeous. It doesn't need any staging at all. It's just absolutely beautiful. So it just, it, it just depends on currently what your house looks like, but definitely consider it. Consider that being one of the things you might need to do to get your home sold. Now, for those of you that are looking to purchase a home, what does that mean for you? You know what? It means you have time. You have time. You do have time to take a breath. You do not need to race through the house and make a decision in five seconds and offer thousands of dollars over list price and you know and all of this. You don't have to do that. All right. You have the opportunity to be picky. You have the opportunity to come back for a second showing three or four days later because it, the house may not go under contract in that time. All right. So you definitely have a little bit more time to really think about the best decision for you. If you need to be back in touch with your lender, let's say you have the time to do that. You also have a little bit more leverage when it comes to your offer. Years ago, people were paying over asking. They were paying for the title policy and the survey and the seller could stay in the house for two months for free. And, you know, and you were footing the bill of that, you know, as a home buyer offers were insane, but now you don't have to do that. I'm typically seeing that all those things that sellers were paying for that the sellers are paying for it. Now they're back to paying for it, meaning they're paying for that title policy. They're, they're paying for a home warranty on houses. If they want to stay in the house for a week or so after closing, they're going to have to pay for that because they're a tenant renting their house. I know it sounds strange, but that's definitely something I tell my sellers. You're not going to get these crazy, crazy offers that are way over asking right now. But for buyers, you definitely always want to put your best foot forward. But if you need some help to pay for your closing costs, or if you would like your sellers to help buy down your interest rate, because that does cost money, then that's money you can ask of the seller. And they may or may not be willing to give that to you. Totally depends on every seller is going to be different, but I am seeing all of, all of that is called seller concessions. And I am seeing a lot more seller concessions when I do run comps for houses. I'm seeing them $5,000 up to $15,000. And I'm also seeing them in like, you know, for $700. And usually that's because repairs, some minor little repairs needed to be done or something like that. But I am seeing multiple thousands of dollars being given to the buyer at closing in order for them to close on that house. 
for whatever the reason that money was given to them. That is where our market stands here in Dallas-Fort Worth as of June 2022. So let me know your thoughts below. And if you're thinking about relocating to the area and don't have an agent here to help you, I would love to help you, love to give you some advice and any tips that you might need. My contact information is in the description below. And if you haven't done so, like and subscribe. The YouTube algorithm totally loves that. All right, thanks for tuning in this week. I will see you next week.